Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. I'm sure, Tyler, you'll probably link this out and tell some of your fans on your blog that you're on the show, and so I do apologize for the intensity in the beginning of the show, but that's just how I roll. Oh, that's all right. I like it. Bring the thunder, baby. Bring yeah. the thunder. So I have a very special guest. I would say probably, you know, Alder from Bonography, myself, and definitely Tyler with DrVino.com. I would say we've been pretty lucky and have maybe had some of the bigger success as bloggers or video bloggers in the wine space. And uh, so it's an honor to have you on the yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be here, man. Thanks, Thank man. you very much. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are and how you roll and... Yeah, um, Hopefully pick up a bunch of new fans for you and all that. All right, yeah. My name is Tyler Coleman, and I write the wine blog, drvino.com. And uh, we have a good time. We talk about wine and uh, talk about um, how we talk about wine, talk about uh, make some wine picks, generally uh, the value side. And, and you're an yeah. author? I've uh, written a couple of books here. Mott, link them up. <laughs> uh, two in one year. Two in one year, That yeah. is crushing it. That is. <laughs> Which one came out first? Glad this I get the one, seal then, of right? approval. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, this one. Um, so when did this one come out? Uh, it was released in July 2008. So July and, last and this year. one? And this one in November 2008. Got so, it. Yeah. That's hardcore. Yeah, it's good. It's good. What, what, what was the concept behind that? Why two in one year? Well, both the, the, um, both with different. Each one with a different publisher. I see. And so, so you switched uh, after the first one. No, of? well, they were both kind of going at the same time. Uh, the first. And they were book, okay with that. They kind of knew it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the first publisher, uh, the first book is um, based on my doctoral dissertation because mm -hmm. I wrote my uh, PhD dissertation on the political economy of the wine industry in Intriguing. France and the United States. Very cool. And so that's the basis of that book, mm -hmm. wine politics, and then uh, the second book. It's more recommendations oriented, mm -hmm. and so in that book, I suggest plotting a seasonal arc to your wine consumption and changing things up with the season. Like if you're stuck in a Chardonnay Cabernet rut, to get out of that, kind of like some of the restaurants and tie that we're into to see. exactly to like yeah. local seasonal mm -hmm. foods, uh, change things up, and uh, and so yeah, so I go through the twelve months of the year and tie into holidays and local foods, seasonal foods. When did you start DrVino.com? Well, uh, I started it in 2002, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was at my uh, PhD dissertation defense party. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, "Hey, Dr. Coleman, way to go!" And some people are like, "You should be, um, you should be Dr. Vin because of what you wrote about." It. I'm like, "Oh, it's too pretentious. It should be Dr. Vino." And everybody's like, "Whoa, Dr. Vino!" And so, uh, and so then it. one of my friends went over and he bought me the URL, Dr. Vino, right there. He's like, "There's your graduation present." And really I'm like, cool. Well, now I got a website. What do I do with that? And this, you know, 2002 blogging is starting to emerge. Did you? know about blogging at that point? Were you? No, no, no. Uh, it wasn't really until the 2004 election that blogging had a real major impact. That's a good point. That's and right. So, and then, and then at that point, a lot of uh, there a lot of free software became available. And sure. Stuff. Well, and I so mean, they were out there, I but over. you know, Blogger and those guys. But some of the right. you know the WordPress started making its name and things like that. What are you on exactly. right now? On WordPress. Um, WordPress. Yep. That's a good platform. Big shout out to, to Maddie Mullenweg. He's been on the show, Mott. Remember we drank a little bit of a scotch. Um, you know what, link that up, <laughs> since he got brought up as well. Um, okay, great, and so it's gone really well for you. Yeah, it's been great. Um, anything else you kind of want to share about that experience or anything? Um, yeah, no, it's really fun. I mean, the... Uh, as it's your you, full-time job? Yeah, yeah, I'm a full-time wine writer and wine educator. I also That's teach right, you teach at wine NYU, right? at NYU. Uh, Very cool. And so, and so, yeah, it's fun. It's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good thing. I love the writing on the web. Uh, it's very immediate. has a broad reach. Uh, Are you blogging every day? Oh, yeah. Uh, broad reach, and it has uh, very interactive. I think that's really yeah. a key part, is that it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. No uh, doubt. And so everybody gets to exchange views. Preaching to the choir, my friend. That's it. Um, <laughs> very good. Good for you. And so, um, and so we've got some wine here. And uh, you know, you suggested some categories, and uh, I think we've got three pretty interesting choices. I think they mold extremely well into this time of year. I was happy to see that you are also on the let's make sure people understand Beaujolais is just not Nouveau train. Just exactly. done a couple of articles about that myself, so um, I'm excited to try that. We've got a really good Riesling and, and a Vouvray. Any reason why these were kind of the categories you wanted to focus on? Um, I think that all of these categories uh, tend to do well with Thanksgiving too. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is a difficult 
uh, uh, event and meal to navigate uh, in part in the meal side because of the side dishes sure. that are so crazy and in the event which part, are so much of the fun right 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 and are you a side dish guy or are you, you you excited about the turkey or do you like the other stuff <laughs> I'm more of a side dish guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. by the way, that's how I order food. <laughs> yeah. Like, when Lizzie and I go out, uh -huh. I'm usually only in the appetizer section. Yeah, yeah. I'll usually order... Like tapas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll order... Small exactly. Plates, yeah. I'll, I'll go three small plates and rarely order Do a main, main dish. Yeah, yeah. You know? But, uh, and then, yeah, the other side is Thanksgiving is an event where you have the relatives and people maybe you don't know so well or something. Mom a big event. Lots of fun. Yeah. yeah. But maybe, maybe, they're not, maybe they're not that into wine. And so that's always another factor to consider, too. Sure. And that's where so, Riesling's probably a nice little play. Exactly. You get some maybe some newbies. So. No question. So what about, just wrapping up before we get into the wine, what about the ambition of, of Dr. Bino? Like, where, where do you want to see it go? What, what would you like to see happen over the next five years career-wise? Don't hold back. This uh, is an interview. Oh Tell wow! Yeah, truth. I don't know. I, I should have prepped for this question coming See, from you. Tough. Very, I'm, you're I'm very goal oriented, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I am. <laughs> but you know, my, mine's a very simple goal, just to buy you know that football team. Oh, um, are you a sports a fan? Well, Tell no. the truth. It's okay. No, no. I have to admit, not no not, sports. Well, some sports. What? Some sports. Uh, you know, running. I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get the vibe. <laughs> nice. Cycling. Yeah. Do you follow it? So, yeah, like, yeah. Like when you follow yeah, the do. tour? Absolutely. Very Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Yep. And where did you grow up? I grew up in Chicago. And you got, it, you liked wine growing up or did your parents? Uh, not, not, I mean, uh, my parents didn't really pour a lot of wine. In fact, uh, since Thanksgiving time of year, I do have some uh, sort of haunting memories of them pouring uh, cold duck and sparkling catawba mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. But, uh, but yeah, it's, um. But no, they didn't really. They weren't that into it. Uh, it was. I, I moved to Europe and uh, spent some time in uh, uh, when I was in college. You know, yep. junior year abroad and stuff. I lived in France and Spain. Hit the right and spots so, for that. And so, yeah, definitely. Because uh, if you made the London choice, yeah, you exactly, may not be here right now. it'd be uh, Doctor Biro. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> Pinto. Um, speaking of which, I'm coming to the UK and doing a book signing and doing the uh, Paul O'Grady show. So, Mott, link that up. You're gonna. Today's a tough one. Throwing a lot of balls at you. Um, okay, very good. So. Yeah, so what what do you want to see happen? I mean, are you is the education part exciting to you, the writing part? You know, I don't know, it's a difficult difficult time. Maybe I should stick around after the show and you could give me a little Talk consultation <laughs> you know, uh, for uh, uh, the strategy for world domination. But uh, but no, I mean, I think that it's a tough time for um, for journalism right now, obviously, yeah. and for writing. And so Do you uh, feel like you're more a journalist or more a teacher? Kind of both. Yeah. You yeah. Fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty. Yeah. A fifty fifty cab or low blend. Like, yes. right, do you feel like right down the line? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you're passionate about both. Yeah, I think there's two sides of the same coin, really. Could you ever see your? I agree. Could you see yourself ever owning a vineyard? Uh, no, not that into it. Mm -mm. No, I like uh, being a wine consumer. <laughs> yeah. Where do you shop? Why well, shop at wine library? <laughs> well, no, no, but it's, I mean, real. I appreciate that, but seriously, where do you shop? Um, at places in the city, mm -hmm. um, like I have some uh, a map of New York City wine stores on my I see, site. Yeah, you have a really nice map of that. Yeah. You did a good so, job with that. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. so I put I did I, see that. I pinpoint some so of my who, favorites. So what like are they? Chamber what Street wines, I think it's very good. good. Peeps. Yeah. Um, yeah, Aster, uh, very They've done close an amazing to where job. I teach. Yep. Yeah. And um, and so yeah, yeah, very. Any of them really disappoint you? You think like any of the big names? I mean, not to raz anybody, but do you feel like some of the bigger names or some of the other stores kind of? Fall short. I think I've always been. Uh, the reason I'm asking is I've been fascinated. I'm sorry to interrupt. New York is a funny wine market. It is unusual. Manha yeah. Manhattan. You know, I feel like you know Zaki's, which is in Westchester, is probably a much better store than anybody really in the city. You know, pricing what have you. But but Astor's store is amazing. I was really impressed. I saw that recently. Um, do you feel like you know? Do you feel like they're overrated, underrated? I guess that's a real question. I mean, growing um, up, it is. Did you shop in Chicago? I yeah, mean, with yeah. Sam's and Binnie's. Are, are more attractive stores to me than a lot of the New York stores. Interesting, yeah. Different different scale, certainly. Um, yeah, for uh, sure. But different pricing. Different pricing, too. You know, yeah. as great as a Chambers or a small niche store is going to have these great selections, well, so did Binnie's and Sam's. Right, yeah. You know? Interesting, yeah. No, I don't, it's a peculiar market because you can only have one license, obviously. That's right. So there's no chains in That's right. uh, New York State. Which hurts um, the scale at some level, right? I, I, and the I, rents are just, so it's high. It's a difficult question. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I get it's, it. Uh, it's tough. Do you it's shop very, online? Do you buy I, from like I, the K&Ls or some of the West Coast stores? Not like the West that. Coast stores, no. More no. East Coast stores. Yeah, more East Coast stores. But yeah, cool. I do I do like uh, the convenience of shopping online. It's great. Sure. I absolutely love it. So. Cool. So, uh, Selbach Ulster, uh, 07 Riesling Cabinet, uh, the Zeltlinger. This is a uh, great vintage, as we've all heard. 92 points from David Schellnett. Uh 
18 Bones, which is an extremely fair price. Have you had anything from Selva Costa before? Yes, absolutely. Great producer, yep. right? And 07, a terrific year. Ridiculously good. Yeah. Ridiculously good. All right, let's get terrific. into this part of it. Snippy sniff time. Give it the little sniffy sniff. Absolutely. What are you picking up on the nose? It's nice. It's got some. Um, it's got some uh, some sort of, like gentle like tropical fruit notes, but but also like wet rocks. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's funny. I, I really caught the tropical yeah. notes right away. Yeah. Kind of like that guava. You know, um, papaya. Very uh, tropical. Yeah. A little more papaya, maybe. You know, I think when people hear tropical, they're so often pushed to pineapple because it's mm -hmm. obvious in a lot of wines. But this, to me, even goes heavy on the papaya. By the way, papaya and guava. If you don't, if you want to be nerdy like us nerds, and you know, and and star fruit, papaya, and guava, three fruits I demand you go out and find at Whole Foods, Wegmans, wherever you go. You know, and those are nose characteristics you find in a lot of wines. That's true. And I think a lot of people don't. I mean, who's eating a lot of papaya? <laughs> It's not at the farmer's market. Definitely not. Um, I'm a little bit less on, I understand where you're going with the wet stone. I'm a little bit less on the nose on this for me. Yeah. But it's a little, it does have a little, like, a slight chalkiness, mm -hmm. which I, I find quite pleasant. But it's also fresh. Just over, overwhelmingly yep. just fresh. Yep. Do you like this kind of nose? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, let's give it a whirl. All right. Pleasure to spit in the bucket, the famous Appreciate bucket. It. <laughs> what do you think? It's nice, got good balance, nice finish, layered. It's good. Eighteen bucks. Do you feel like it's lacking acidity? It's a little bit soft, right? A creamy. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's got a little love handle action, which, under normal circumstance, I like quite a bit. But in my wines, especially when I'm built up to get a lot of acid. You know, I'm very much into, you know, high acid. I'm addicted to acid yeah. when it comes to wines only. And so, um, it's missing a little acidity for me. A little spare tire action. I, well, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I how about that, for yeah. you, though? For no, your palate, got, are you got, more looking? For me, when I taste it, I'm like, this is delicious. I like it. I agree with you. It is layered, which I thought is a great term that you used. I agree with that. But pear, apple, that. papaya, pear, apple, papaya, you know? But I felt like... I was waiting for it on the back end to like it's hit the, me. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely got a little bit more of the um, sweetness than the acidity, but obviously it has a bit of both, as so many great German recently. Where do you do. sit on points? But, are you somebody that hates or points? Are you are one of these you new know, wave guys that hates points? Uh, you know, because that's like the movement now, right? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Points are so bad. I I don't use uh, points personally. Yeah. Um, what, do do you like review wine on the blog, like in a way, yeah. like and what would you say? I like it. With, yeah, <laughs> I try and describe it and tell yep. a little bit about where it came but you from. Won't, and you won't give any, and stuff and you and won't give taste. stars or points or anything. No, no, I don't. Know. I just feel that um, although I understand where they come from, right? Uh, uh, that they that they can be taken out of context too much, um, and so it's just it's just a point in time. Some guy, some woman, somebody was tasting a wine and and decided to take a notation, you know, right. and and use a shorthand format, and then that gets kind of blown up. I feel a lot of times, and that that that, and that number becomes, that number is becomes fro it. is frozen. Frozen time, time and 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 so yeah so it's um I think that I understand the intuitive uh, appeal nature of it yeah 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 it's great and I understand you know why how it's very po powerful and stuff but I think it's almost become too powerful in a way no I think because it implies plus it implies a sort of um, precision mm -hmm. um, uh, there that that may or may not actually be there maybe you know, I, maybe I, general categories is a bit I, I think you're right I mean go, so. I, I think um, there's you know we talk about in the show quite a bit like you know it's, it's tough I mean these people put all this time in and then in this two seconds, here I am with Mott, boom, eh, eh, and that's it. Yeah. There's definitely, you know, I think what it what needs to happen is just reference points. You know, you know where somebody's palate sits. I mean, what I've always loved about Parker personally was when I would taste a wine, boy oh boy, especially as a buyer who's trying to get wines that got good press, right. I knew his palate cold right. and knew like, oh man, yeah. you know, this is probably going to get scored quite well and this is the style people are drinking, uh -huh. what, Zins or what have you at the time. Um, but I get it. I, I think it's very valid on all fronts. To me, David overscored this wine a little bit from my palate, lacking that acid and, and you know, maybe the layered appeal for him was high, 92 points, a little high for mm -hmm. my palate. Mm -hmm. 
Um, do you just like score in your head in a way though? Even though you don't publicly do it, do you like green, not score, but do you range it like this? Is in the high side of what I like? No, I don't. I don't. I don't do that. Oh, but, but, but I would say. So is it yeah. like communism for you in your mind? <laughs> is like everybody the same? Everybody's the same. No, no, no. Okay, just um, just curious. They uh, no, no, no. Definitely, there's gradations, but I think you can achieve that with words. It doesn't no, have to I think just you're be right. a shorthand. I mean, no, I think you're right. Listen, a lot of people so. bust my chops behind, you know, on on email and say, dude, not only do you have words, we can see it. Right. We don't need that point. Right. Stigma attached to it. Right. What's, and and I think and it. I think that's a, yeah. a very valid point. On the flip side, you've got to kind of do what you want to do, right? Right. And for me, you know, maybe because of the sports or what have you, or maybe because I grew up with it so hard, I like it. I like it, and I'm going to score this wine an 88 plus. It's a nice wine. 88 plus. All 88 right, plus yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where it would fall. Yeah. The acid lack is a killer. Is a killer. I think that uh, for wine geeks, the mm -hmm. lack of acidity it would be. Uh, would be worth downgrading it, but I think for newbies like a Thanksgiving and stuff, it kind of makes it even more approachable. I, I think you're right about so, that. I think you're right about different that. Audience, though so. it's interesting, like my dad. But then even that's a generalism, right? Yeah. Because my dad, knowing my dad, yeah. who doesn't like white wine and is like so weird in a way like that, you know, he loves seltzer. Uh huh. He does not like still water. Interesting, right? Okay, okay? but yeah. he's addicted to seltzer. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I would rather give him a wine with high acid. Uh huh. Then give him this because to me this is the water version of a high acids version being a seltzer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's right. almost like you've got to almost. I mean, it's that distinct to the bone. It's like an individual palate. Mm -hmm. A newbie could love massively. Right. You know. Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. 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 Yeah. 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 It, well, that's what makes it fun. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Vouvray. All right. Domaine du Viking, 05 Vouvray, uh, 89 points wine spectator, 20 US dollars. 12% alcohol, let's rinse. Which vintage is this, you said? This is 05. 05, okay. Which, uh, pretty nice vintage. Gives a little bit of, a little bit more rounded aging to it than all the 07s in the market. Mm -hmm. Are you a Vouvray guy? Yeah, a Vouvray is a... You like uh, Chenin Blanc? I do like Chenin Blanc. I think it's a, a great grape. I uh, do too. Hugely, I, think it's I think it's hugely underrated. I, oh. I knew I like. <laughs> yes. I, was gonna, I, I let you get. They always yell at me for like talking over. So I was like, I'll let them have this one. I agree. Right, okay. I agree. I agree. I, I think it's massively underrated, and I also think it's one of the most flexible varietals in the world. Definitely. And what they do with dessert wines. Yep. I mean, are just incredible. Absolutely. Cote de Leon. Come, yeah. So. Go with so many expressions: sparkling, so many dry, off dry, point. dessert wine. Yep. It really. Amazing. Do you yeah. find I mean, yourself drinking a lot of Shannon? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's okay. uh, it's a great, 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 you, and so underrated. It's flying under the radar, and so it's such a great value. I You're think, right. Do you respect what's going on in South Africa with it, or do you feel that's too new world and you don't like that as much? Um, you know, I don't. I, I do think that Chenin Blanc is very expressive of the site, and so site is important. Uh, unfortunately, South African wines. Uh, I just don't find that many of them here in the U.S. market right mm -hmm. now. Uh, that's one country I think that's pretty underrepresented, I mm -hmm. would say. So mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot of experience with Steen, as it's known, sure. uh, there in South Africa. Got it. Um, Maybe you should go to the World Cup. Yeah, there you go. You like the soccer? That'd be fun. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, soccer. Another one running, yeah. soccer, soccer. USA soccer. qualified already. I know. So, yeah, we're it's there. <laughs> Amazing. Pumped. Okay, let's get into it. A little snippy snip action. Oh, my God. Hmm. That was wild. Yeah. That's a wild nose. That's that's pretty unusual, yeah. But I, you know, the first reaction was it was so wild. I'm like, is this cork? Yeah. But then I don't really find that on the nose. No, it's not TCA. It's a. Uh, it's definitely not. It's pretty unusual. It's yeah. quite basely and green, yeah. right? It's yeah. like fennel. Very and, herbaceous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massively herbaceous, Mott. I know you like the herb. <laughs> it's very herbaceous. Let's give it a whirl. That's all you need to say, by the way. As he's tasting. I mean, this is just straight up herbs. And it massively follows through on the palate. Yeah, well. Do you mm. think this is an off bottle? I'd like to try another one. I before, really would too. Before uh, I will try another one. Rendering next any judgment I will, on that. I will, yeah. I will try another one on the show in the next couple weeks, Ma. I don't remember, but this is ridiculously herbaceous. Yeah, it is. It's massively green. Mm. I'll tell you, Very it's kind of. Tell me this. Do you like this? Not so much. Yeah. And and I and I felt that because it does almost feel like almost flawed. Wildly enough, talking about palates, I like this wine because 
I love English peas. Mm-hmm. English peas are my single favorite thing to buy in a supermarket. Interesting. Yeah, I'm a big... Are, do you like peas? Oh, sure, yeah. So, like, to me, I pick up that flavor. So, little English peas, there's almost like a Brussels sprout mm-hmm. component. There's a fennel, um, basil kind of thing. I'm very driven by green. Jets, all that. I, I like green flavors in my mouth, uh-huh. and this is loaded with it. Yeah. So, would you, if you were... Go ahead. So, you're yeah. blogging. You're, yeah, you're yeah. reviewing this wine. Yeah. Fire away. What would, how would you go about it? Well, yeah, it's got it's got a uh, pronounced herbaceousness. The uh, uh, so yeah, it's um, I don't know. If mm, I, I would mm. I would really. I have no emotional attachment to it. No, no, I understand so that. So if you have to drill this wine, punch it right in the face, do your thing. No, I don't know. I mean, I, I this is where maybe this gets back to the question of points and um, you know, bottle variation is yeah. certainly a thing when it comes to points like bottle like variation. If, Mindset variation, right? Weather variation. Context. I mean, context, the context is the big. Exactly. Everybody who watches this show knows that if the Jets win on Sunday, the Monday wines will be awesome. rated higher. They, <laughs> they will be awesome. But if it was going to be a seventy-four, it might be a seventy-six. Um, or all the people that are watching right now, people that read your blog, the people that have gone to Europe, they love the wine. They come here and they think it's different here. Exactly. Do they add sulfites? Is it different? It's not different. You were on vacation. The kids weren't pissing you off. You didn't have to take out the dog in the rain. You were relaxing with your loved ones. The blackberry was back. That's shop, right. cook, clean up. That's right. You, know, you just sit down and nice Absolutely. meal. Absolutely. So. so you're absolutely correct. Context. So you're right. So, so you feel like this is, in your mind, it would have sprung. Is this a, like, look, the way we reacted, is this a bottle variation? I, I would, I mean, before I wrote anything up about this particular one, I would want to try another bottle. Just to give it a fair shot, you know, uh, because it doesn't really... It doesn't taste like a Vouvray to me, and so I would be... It really doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is wild stuff. I, I'm definitely so, going to retaste it. But, but I think it's interesting, though, because about, about this question of points, like some consumer who maybe had never tried a Vouvray before might say, hey, somebody, you know, rated this an 89, and so That's this right. has to be a good bottle. That's and, right. And, uh, or and they might they, say, or say wow, English peas. I didn't know that was part of Vouvray. You know? You're right. So, You've inspired me. I'm not going to score this wine. Ooh. Take that, SS Chris. All right. Take that. <laughs> Stanise, take that. That's just a guy who... Okay, anyway, right. fine. Inspired Mott on the there show today. And finally, and we got to rinse pretty good here. So Ooh. let's rinse... Uh, All right, let's give it the rinsey rinse. Yeah, let's really rinse up Ooh. here. Because... I know, everybody's going to yell That's king size wasted. rinse portion. That's a king yeah. size rinse. But, you know, I want to really make sure we get that green out. That's true. Especially because these gamets tend to have a little green of their own, often. Now, Vouvray is... A, by the way, I'll, let's kick a little knowledge since we're sitting here together... Vouvray is an amazing part of the Loire Valley. It's it about, is. It's about 5,000 acres, I think, you know, back history books now. 5,000 or so acres. Big area mix. Quiz. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Really, really, really good stuff. You know, um, Chenin Blanc is, an, as we talked about, is an amazing grape. And, and really, the sad thing to me is that the majority of you who are watching right now, when you think of Vouvray, you think of B&G Vouvray, because that's mm-hmm. really the Vouvray that has any distribution in the world. And that's, you know, not to take anything away from B&G, but, you know, it's kind of pumped out in standard. So right. if you get an opportunity to try a real Vouvray at a restaurant or when you go out, please, please, please. The thing is that. about B&G is that it's a blend, a negociant. Uh, that's right. Uh, they're, so they're blending various sites, but there's so many farmers. And their contracts run out. Farmers who have site, site-specific wines, you know. That's right, so many. So, yeah. A steak grown, we, we, we talked about that recently. So anyway, good. Let's move on. All right. You a uh, big fan of this guy? Chignard, yeah, yeah, it's a good one, yeah. yeah. Have, have you had some of this stuff? I have, yeah. Yeah, Chignard is a, a really sensational uh, Beaujolais producer. This is the Fleury, the Moray, 19 U.S. bones brought in by Kermit Lynch. Now, did I notice on the back of your book that he gave you a little write-up for your book? He did. He were blurbed you, the book, yeah. Were you pumped about that? That was great. Yeah, yeah. very nice uh, he's a pretty, to do that. He's so. a pretty ep- epic character. 19 <laughs> he is, bones. He is. I've never met him, but... Uh. <laughs> $19. Uh, not inexpensive by Beaujolais standards. You know, most people think Beaujolais 7, 9, 12. They think of the Jadot and the Beauf Beaujolais Village. So 19 bones may catch people off guard, but a lot of people forget. You know, Beaujolais is within the Burgundy region. It's Gamay grape. Though there is up to 15% allowed of white grapes in mm-hmm. Beaujolais. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm a pretty big, big fan of Fleury, Moulin Avant, Morgon. How about you? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. No, I think, I think that... Uh, Dr. Coleman. I think that... Uh, uh, that, that that Cru, Cru Beaujolais uh, is a great value. Another 
another great wine category that's flying under the radar. Uh, I think that there is a bit of a stigma associated with Cru Beaujolais a lot of times for the Beaujolais Nouveau because people, when they hear the word Beaujolais, they think they instantly go to the color flower bottle of exactly of uh, some tutti frutti sort of. Good word. Uh, new wine, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, while, while Beaujolais Nouveau is very fun, and I'm all in favor of a worldwide celebration of wine. Uh, Agreed. Uh, you know, it's just maybe There's not, sometimes not it's the time best. to put on the professor's glasses and right. get down to business. <laughs> exactly. Having a wine, uh, again, from a specific site, uh, from, a, from older vines, and uh, in a lot of cases, uh, uh, you know, made with natural indigenous yeast. Sure. Um, hand harvested as, as the grapes are. Are you very in, passionate in about sense of place? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because place. listening to you talk and yeah. your vibe, it seems like that's where I see a little bit more of that twinkle in that yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, absolutely. Um, and so Fleury have is you a, been a great to growing Beaujolais? area. I have, yep. Yeah, it's yep. an amazing area. It is nice, yeah, yeah. very nice. It's, it's, smaller, it's, it's about 2,000 acres. It's having a tough time uh, uh, right now. Very hard, tough. Hard times in Beaujolais. L listen, with the economy where it's at and the pricing structure where it's at, a lot of places are having a hard time. True. A lot of places, and there's a lot of. I mean, hence Cinderella wine. Why we came out with that. Right. Yeah. Look it up. Uh, you know. Um, you know. I mean, there's opportunity for the consumer for sure. Yep. And and that's too bad for the farmers, but very good for the consumers right now. Are you finding good deals here and there? Are you like. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the dollar, of course. Uh, that's a good point. It really getting, runs the opposite <laughs> direction. <sick>. Yeah. <laughs> is it at one? Is it over one fifty like still a, right now? Like a weakling. Uh, I, yeah. I yeah. think yeah, I think yeah. this has been been falling out. All right, so, yeah. let's sniffy sniff this up. See, these are just, I I mean, these wines are so massively underrated. Ironically, I catch something really weird on the end of the nose here, but you know, I love the little fact of the black and white pepper on the nose. Mm. That's really neat, isn't it? It is nice. And yeah. And when you when you mix it with the floral aspects that this get, gives out on the nose, like that rose petal yep. kind of thing, yep. are you picking up anything else? Does. Yeah, some some nice uh, red berry fruit, you know. It's yeah. very pleasant, very... You're right, it's not dark uh, fruit. Right, It's yeah. not blueberries or blackberries. Exactly. It's much more, like, light strawberries. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a weird question, and, you know, you know, I'm, I'm notorious for some of my, you know, descriptions. I pick up something quite neat on a nose here, and I don't know if you've ever had any. It smells a little bit like a Tootsie Roll to me. Like there's Tootsie a, Roll, yeah. There's a little hint of that Tootsie Roll on the back end of the nose. Hmm. Well, uh, since I just raided my son's Halloween basket, uh, did you? I can tell you. Well, I, <laughs> attacked it. You yeah, let it he sit had far around. Far too much, you know. How yeah. old? <laughs> Six years old. Congratulations. So, yeah. What's yeah, his thanks. name? Uh, Xander. Xander. It's yeah. an awesome name. And don't forget Nate, the little guy too. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. How old's Nate? <laughs> he didn't have a picnic, uh, Halloween basket though. So. Did Xander but, uh, go out and get Halloween candy? Oh for, yeah, yeah. We went trick or treating. treating. No, but for, for both for, of them. For no, Nate? no, Nate went along too. Yeah, he was. Did taught, did Xander go to the? Door and say, can I get some for Nate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's a good, yeah. good, good Did all make it to Nate, though, I'm afraid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. But, uh, but yeah, it... Um, I get yeah, a little bit of that. You know, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that candied or confected would right. be a good term in right. a lot of cases, but I do get a little bit of what you're saying here in this in this case, and um, you know, I think it's a fun a fun wine, and uh, and I it's, mean, so it's unoaked too, and so it's got that uh, fruit forward style, it and does. it's unoaked, and it's uh, yeah. The, so, the the pepper component of this wine is what attracts me. Like that yeah, initial the shot grind. of it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's give it a whirl. What do you think? Yeah, it's a very nice Cru Beaujolais. Um, do you find it a hair light for you? Maybe a little bit. Me um, too. I'm a little surprised, actually. It's. Um, I like. I was really getting pumped. Yeah. And then, like the fourth quarter, like a typical <laughs> Jets game, things <laughs> fell apart a little bit for me. You know. Yeah. Go ahead, please. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. No. No. I would. Um, I would say. Yeah. It's. It's. I, I think it's a very good uh, flurry, but I don't think. Um, I, I agree that it's uh, maybe. Not hanging in there entirely, but still a very nice wine, though. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think Tyler's just a, a better person than I am. And he's being polite. Um, <laughs> I'm the guest. Fair. I think 65 percent of the way through this wine, starting with the nose, this wine deserves 90 point type status. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you know, you know that kind of stuff. I was really excited. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my god, we're about to really like dance on this Beaujolais party right, together. Yeah. I thought we were gonna yeah. get wild, mm -hmm. like right here on the set. Uh -huh, yeah, I, yeah, and yeah. then it really does collapse for me. I mean, I feel the the 
t- I wouldn't call it the mid palette. I'd call it the third quarter palette. Yeah. Got a little light on me. It really falls off on the finish. It gets a little disjointed even on the mm. finish. And I even can taste a little bit. There's a little thing here now with the alcohol. I mean, it's just, yeah. you know. I, I was hanging together. No. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really weird because this is distinctly good in the first 70, 65, 70% of the wine. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, some wines just never come together. I'm going to score 87 points. I think it's a nice effort. I, I, I like the, you know, the way you were, even your body language. Like, yeah, you know, it's good. You know, yeah. I, I think that's kind of fair uh, assessment. I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm sorry, you know, you slept all the way here. I, I would have liked to have something that really was riveting. Oh, that's I apologize right. for that. <laughs> I really do. Um, so... I'm really happy you came on the yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really wish you continued success with what you're doing. Thank you. Give me a little sense of the best and worst wine you've had recently. Best and most disappointing. Best and most disappointing. All right, let's see. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, uh, my wife and I celebrated our 10th anniversary recently. Yeah, yeah, Lizzie and I just celebrated our 5th. All right. November 13th. Excellent. We were October 9th. So. Okay. Beat you by a month there. Very cool. <laughs> but um, the uh, yeah, so we went out to uh, a nice restaurant and uh, decided to splurge. We went to uh, Blue Hill. Yeah. Uh, in uh, in oh, Westchester. So you're, so you're all about the sense of place. Yeah, yeah. You're really riding that train. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And local seasonal food. Cool. So yeah. Which is the same yeah. you know, for me. And so um, and so yeah, we had a really nice wine there. It was great great wine experience. I, in fact, I uh, I. I wasted the precious time of many of my uh, readers or followers, I guess in this case on Twitter, uh, by pinging uh, uh, the uh, link to the wine list out there and asking them what they would do if they're celebrating their anniversary sure. uh, that evening, you know. And so a lot of this interesting, a lot of great responses came in. And so we ended up having the uh, 1985 um, uh, uh, Lopez de Heredia, uh, sure. Tondonia, Tondonia Grand Which, Reserva. I was so, just in the Rioja. That's right, you week. were, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Which is a great old world, true Rioja. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Did you Good get a you. chance to go to any wineries while you were there? I really didn't. I was yeah. in and out. I spoke. I did my thing. Yeah, yeah. It was a good time. Uh, it was a very good time. Yeah. You know, hang, you know, you know, Steve Spurrier and Jancis and Parker and just, you know, I'm like, what am I doing here on stage with these kind of characters, kind of thing? But it was flattering and got to speak and, you know, um, I'm passionate about people building happy businesses around the things they love. And so that's kind of what I talked about. Yeah. Did they get it there? Did they get the... Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not there? sure if anybody gets me. They, you know, um, I, I think, yes, it was shocking how many people came up to me and said, I did not think this was real until your talk. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm not coming at it from a romance standpoint. Right. I'm coming at it, a, this is where the world is. Right. This is business and wine needs to be a part of this world be, for it to succeed. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm very passionate about that. Uh, uh, you know? Yeah. Um, very nice. So you had a great wine. Yeah. yeah and how about disappointing? Wine. Disappointing. Um, well, uh, the other day in uh, uh, yeah, the other day at an event we had a cork bottle, and that's always disappointing. <laughs> you may be the most polite guy I know. <laughs> Fire away with a question of the day. Any question you like. It's the tradition. All right. I'll answer. Question of the day is: uh, Which one are you gonna have with Thanksgiving? Flat out. There you go. What wine are you having for Thanksgiving? Yeah. 2009? And, and a little sub-question. Uh-oh. Are you going to make that a Magnum? Huh. Are you passionate about big bottles? You know, it's fun. Especially when you got a lot of people around, you know. That's a good point. It's, it's good. Do you have big it's bottles in your, in your collection? I actually have some big bottles of Cru Beaujolais. No way! Yeah, that's sort good of my, my speed like right now. Yeah. I understand. I understand. <laughs> we need to get you more readers. Well, hopefully that's right. Accomplish it. <laughs> Excellent, Gary. I wish you well. Thanks, Thanks for very being much. on the show. Okay. You, with a little bit of me, and great dudes like this, we're changing the world.